Well, now time for our Should I Worry segment, our weekly segment about everything that worries us. This viewer is asking, my husband was recently diagnosed with AFib. His heart rate was in the mid to upper 30s, changed his blood pressure medication, and is now in 60s. Should I worry? Dr. Samadhi, first of all, what is AFib? How do you know you have it? And who's likely to get it? So atrial fibrillation, as it sounds, it doesn't have the normal rhythm of the heart. Heart usually has two chambers of atrium and ventricles, and they are in sync. They have to work together in order to pump the blood all over your body. When you have atrial fibrillation, the entire heart, Arthel, is out of sync. Atrium is kicking on its own. It's not coordinated, and the blood doesn't get to the right places. As a result, you are at a very high risk of getting stroke fourfold and two times fold of risk of getting death from atrial fibrillation. 60% of the patients, 2.7 million people that have AFib, may, may, may not have any symptoms, but you may also have shortness of breath, you may be dizzy, you may be tired, and all of those symptoms. Check your doctor. Your heart may be racing. That's one, those are one of the symptoms. How do you know you would have it? And how do you, you get it? You, well, uh, age family history, smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, all the good stuff, all the enemies that we have. You get an EKG and it will show you that the whole rhythm is out of sync. Electrical pulse of the heart is out of sync. And the sooner you treat this with Coumadin and blood thinning medication that Mark usually prescribes, you reduce the risk of stroke. That's really the big thing with atrial fibrillation. Yeah, but Dr. Mark, how long do you have to stay on those blood thinning medications once you're on them? Great question, Arthel. Actually, if it's, a, if it's a consistent problem, chronic atrial fibrillation, you need to be on them for the rest of your life. And I do diagnose this about once a week where there's a quivering uh, northern part of the heart, the atrium, and you, you, you're getting an irregular heartbeat. It's irregularly irregular. I look at an EKG and I see those spikes and they're irregular. And at that point, I want to control the rate, okay? I want to get the rate slow because in atrial fibrillation, most of the time it's too fast. Now, the viewer wrote in and said, what do I do if the rate is 30 or 40? That's actually an excellent question. You know why? Because he, may be, he or she may be on something to lower his rate, but sometimes it lowers it too much. Mm -hmm. And if it lowers it too much, they're going to black out from that. I may have to put a pacemaker into the patient. Yeah. Can you it, feel it, this? I mean, can you, I'm sorry. Can you actually feel it? You can feel, you feel something quivering. You can feel the irregular beat. It, we call it palpitations. Most of the time, you can feel the irregular beat. The risk here is a stroke. 20% of strokes are related to this problem because blood clots build up in the heart and then they go off to the brain so and, and Eric to answer your question a little better you don't always feel anything and that's why oh, okay. the other day I screened somebody with an EKG said he was feeling fine I found atrial fibrillation hmm. you mentioned something I want to follow up and maybe you can answer I'll, your question to Dr. Samadhi you mentioned that if you were on a medic blood pressure medication it was too low you switch your medication to get your pre blood pressure up okay how tricky is that to kind of keep readjusting your blood pressure medication. You need to monitor this, obviously, under surveillance of a cardiologist very, very closely. This is a tricky business with atrial fibrillation. And even as a surgeon, every time a patient comes in that needs the operation, I always, this is a big red flag because they can have complications. That's why some of the things that Mark mentioned, as far as Coumadin, blood thinning medication, maybe even pacemaker, or what we call cardioversions. We basically like play with some of the electrical stimulation of the heart to con convert them to regular rhythm and then maybe they clear them for surgery, etc. Because these patients are always at a high risk of stroke. Got to go, but is this, our viewer, is he in, in danger? Yes or no? He needs to be checked by a cardiologist. Now look, David's point, final point, sometimes we can convert you back to normal rhythm and sometimes we can't. It depends on what your heart looks like. Well, they can have right. these operations, major surgeries, right. but we, we talk, there's right. no, not enough right. time.